Chapter 821 I Want to Fight Against Dollar Hansen was not allowed to take part in the meetings between the Alliance and the visiting Shura, in which they sought to broker peace. The introductory meetings took them only two days, but it would take at least two months to negotiate terms. There were many conspiracies in the works, ones which Hansen could not understand due to his lack of proficiency in the field of politics. All he did was wait until Ji Yin and was ready for him to go to the dinner. Ji Yin Ran was very nervous. After all, she was a girl. She knew Hansen was strong, but the thought of him having to fight for her in such an important battle made her anxious. Such a fight wasn't meant to be life-threatening. The fight did not allow the use of weapons, and elites would be watching the entire proceedings. If things were being taken too far, demigod elites would swoop in and bring an end to the exhibit. But even so, Ji Yin Ran was worried. She looked for her father, wanting to know if there was a way they could avoid the fight. Ji Ruajin was fond of Hansen, and he thought highly of him. He told Ji Yin Ran, do not worry for his well-being. He is from the Luo family. He won't lose, not even in a fight against a royal Shura. Unbeknownst to Ji Ruajin, however, Hansen had refused to learn anything from the Luo family. Had he known this, his certainty in Hansen's victory would not have been as firm. Despite her intense worry, Ji Yin Ren did not display it to anyone. She was particularly adamant about not letting Hansen know how she felt, in case it affected his judgment and performance. Furthermore, she did not want to appear weak and distraught before the Shura. Hansen met Yuchilan during the feast, and he was surprised that the Shura looked far more handsome in person than he did in the photo. Humans lacked the ability to maintain the sort of presence that the Shura displayed. But the same was true the other way around. Shura could not mimic the sensibilities of humans. Hansen preferred humans due to their greater kindness, diversity, and ability to be casual. The royal Shura might have looked handsome and enticing, but he knew he'd have difficulty getting along with them once they were beyond the formalities of the peace brokering meetings. In the middle of the feast, the Shura suggested a duel. The alliance had already prepared for this suggestion, and so everyone walked outside towards the plaza. Before the entrees had even arrived, Yu Chilan was already there waiting. Ji Yin Ran was nervous. She hoped Yu Chilan did not challenge her, for if he did, Hansen would have to fight. All the humans waited with bated breath for Yu Chilan to name the person he wanted to challenge. If he chose Ji Yin Ran, although it would not be fair, she would have no choice but to accept the request. Then, as her fiancé, Hansen would step forward to fight on her behalf as her champion. But there was a problem. If Hansen lost, and Yu Chilan challenged Ji Yin Ren again, humans would have lost two matches. Such a thing would be a profound embarrassment. Yu Chilan's eyes were like jewels. And with them, he scanned all the young humans that were lined up before him. When his eyes fell on Ji Yin Ren, they stopped. His steady gaze made the hearts of everyone jump in their chests. Yu Chilan raised his lips in a disdainful smile. Then, he looked away from her. Yu Chilan looked at all the people before him, and said, I wonder, which one of you is? Dollar? I have heard he is the strongest young human by a cosmic mile. I want to fight him. When he said this, everyone froze. No one had anticipated this request. The receptionist ran up and said, Mr. Yu, I do not know where you have heard about Dollar, but what you say is not true. Wang Xiao is our most famous young one. H.M., that is strange. Then how did I hear about this Dollar person managing to achieve a position amongst the Ten Son of Gods? As for this Huang Xiao, I have never heard of him. Yu Chilan grinned. Huang Xiao was very calm. Without any feelings of awkwardness, he said, Dollar is powerful, but I can provide the challenge you seek. Yu Chilan looked at Huang Xiao and laughed. He said, Okay, then I'll beat you first. After that, I will go against Dollar. But you better find him for me. You better win against me first, Huang Xiao said, bravely. Yu Chilan said nothing in response to this. He merely walked across the plaza with a happy look on his face, and the receptionist confirmed the fight. Huang Xiao had already achieved the status of a surpasser. Although he had only just reached the third god sanctuary, his fitness was over 300. And he was a powerful person, one who should have no trouble beating the young Shura royal. The fact that Yu Chilan had not selected Ji Yin and made many people breathe a sigh of relief. Although Han Sin was not a bad fighter, Many people still believed he relied completely on his super pet. They wouldn't feel confident about him fighting against Yu Chilan, mano a mano. Ji Yin Ran was also relieved. 
She was not afraid of him losing, but she just didn't want him to shoulder the risk and burden of such a prestigious fight. Hansen smiled, held Ji Yin Ren from behind, and said, It looks like this young Shura noble is, well, noble. He doesn't appear to be obscene and cheap. It's a shame Dollar is not here. If he was here, I am sure he'd teach him a thing or two about combat. Ji Yin Ren smiled. So, are you saying Dollar could beat him, but not me? Hansen looked jealous when he said this, and he noticed it himself. He thought it was weird for him to be jealous of his own alias. You are the best, but it is better if you remain uninjured. I fret for your safety every time you venture back into the sanctuary, Ji Yin, and whispered into Hansen's ears. Hansen felt ashamed when he heard this. He realized he had spent too much time focused on making himself stronger, and not enough time with Ji Yin Ren. Ji Yin and had been busy a lot, yes, but lately, Hansen had been far busier than she had been. Huang Xiao and Yu Chelan both entered the established battleground at the center of the plaza. An old royal shura and a demigod stood at each end of the court. If something cruel seemed set to occur, they would step in and put an end to the battle. You strike first. If I strike first, I'm afraid this will be over before it begins. Yu Chelan looked at his opponent coldly. Okay then. Huang Xiao looked a little angry at how condescending and rude his foe was being. Although the feast and accompanying battle was not open to the media, many high-class members of the alliance had ways of watching the entire event. Normally, people wouldn't watch a fight such as this. But the people in this fight were special, so everyone of importance was sure to keep an eye on the coming duel. Chapter 822 Huang Xiao For a long time, the fitness of humans had been nowhere near the heights of the Shura. But humans strive to be better. Generations after their first meeting, the gap in talent between the two species was still unbridged. But then came the discovery of the sanctuaries, and after this, humanity accelerated in strength as if they were cheating. While it did not change the average human, human elites were capable of becoming stronger than the Shura. Kids and teenagers were still particularly vulnerable, being far weaker than the Shura. Humanity had many goals. And the humans of this universe wanted to develop their kids and teenagers until they were naturally superior to those of the Shura. It was a common desire, shared by not only the average, working citizen, but by the high ranking officers of the Alliance as well, the latter of which were actively working towards it. Humans below the age of 16 were unable to compete with the Shura. At around the age of 20, people who were fortunate enough could develop the necessary strength to battle them. The Shura that humans most sought to beat were the Royal Shura. They were the cream of the crop, and felling an average Shura fighter paled in comparison to the strength required to take down a Royal Shura. The Alliance had high hopes for Huang Xiao. In combat, talent, and luck, he was the best in his age bracket. He was born a noble but possessed a natural talent. He was very fortunate, also. He spawned in the grandest human shelters in the first, second, and third god sanctuaries. Through this luck, he was able to grow up both safely and swiftly. All of this crafted him into who he had become on this day, and he had been personally picked by the Alliance as the one to beat the Royal Shura Yu Chelan. Many people from the Alliance believed Huang Xiao had what it took to win this fight, and if he succeeded, it would bring great joy to them. The only negative was that Huang Xiao was one year older than his opponent. Still, it was an acceptable difference. Huang Xiao was not only lucky, however, he was smart wise, and composed. Even in the midst of the pressure such a situation could pose, he remained absolutely calm. And even with the added provocation of his foe, he did not display a glimmer of anger. Hansen waited for the match to begin. He wanted Huang Xiao to win, as well. It was about asserting glory for his entire race, so he did not particularly care for who the fighter was, he who would take the mantle and responsibility of such a prestigious fight, as long as they won. Shall we establish a wager? Suddenly, a man's voice was heard. Han Sen and Ji Yin and turned around with much surprise to the sight of Tang Jin Niu and Lin Feng. It was Tang Jin Niu who spoke. And what shall we wager? Han Sen asked, smiling. Let us make a bet on who will win this battle, Tang Jin Niu said. I bet Huang Xiao wins. This isn't a bet. It's a scam, Han Sen said with a wry smile. Tang Jin Niu laughed, then changed the subject. Han Sen, there is something I would like to discuss with you. I was wondering if you might sell me a life geno essence? And if you can't, lend me your super pet so that I might kill a super creature for myself. The prices of such favors are for you to determine. I have one life geno essence I can sell you, 
but in the sanctuaries, I am a long, long way from home. It will take me a long time to return. Hansen did not decline, as first-generation life geno essences had no value to him. That aside, when the Shura liquid became public, the value of life geno essences would drop as it became easier for others to slay super creatures. Holding on to one now seemed pointless considering what lay ahead. Really? Where are you? Tang Zhenliu asked, visibly happy. Let's watch the match first. We can talk more about this later. When Hansen turned back to look at the stage, the fight had already started. The rules of this fight stated no one was allowed any form of external support. The battle was to be fought mano a mano, with no weapons or armor or anything else. Humans couldn't use beast souls either, so Huang Xiao swung his fist. When Huang Xiao swung, Hansen was surprised. He had only just become a surpasser, but still, there was fierce weight and strength driving the fist. Huang Zhao's body glowed with gold like a Buddha in the gleaming light that radiated from his raging fist. The Huang family's golden Buddha may not be very well known, but it cannot be any worse than platinum body. It increases your body's vitality as well as its simple power. He seems calm and composed using it. Perhaps it isn't surprising. When he first became a surpasser, no one could beat him while he used it, Tang Zhenliu explained. Peng, Huang Zhao's fist hit Yu Qilan. The royal Shura did not dodge, but accepted the hit instead. Everyone looked at them with wide eyes, keen to learn the result of the hit. Most people from the alliance believed Huang Xiao had the edge over his enemy. After all, Huang Zhao's fitness level was over 300. This far exceeded Yu Qilan's estimated fitness of 260. By all rights, Huang Xiao should have had a clear advantage over his foe. The result, however, was a little shocking. Yu Qilan somehow evened out the attack and no damage was delivered to either combatant. In quick retaliation, they both swung their fists. No one expected the fight to be so tense, so shortly after beginning, Yu Qilan and Huang Xiao stood on the spot, their fists flying towards each other in a flurry. The sounds of whipped wind and club bones emanated harshly between the fighters. This is bad. It looks like our intel may have been incorrect. It would seem Yu Qilan's fitness is far higher than what we originally believed it to be. He can compete against Huang Xiao without being at a disadvantage. His fitness must be over 300 for sure. There is no way he can be suppressed or dominated as we initially expected him to be. Tang Zhenmiu frowned. Hansen frowned, too. The vitality of a royal Shura was naturally very high. Huang Xiao could only keep up because of his usage of Golden Buddha. Not even ordinary celestial beings were naturally that strong. It seemed as if Yu Qilan hadn't learned any skills to strengthen his body, which was fortunate. But it was frightening to think his body's vitality was on par with Huang Zhao's, despite being all natural. Everyone watched the match intently, all in support of Huang Xiao. They earnestly hoped he would beat his foe. I really envy the body of Ashura. If humans were like them, our power in the sanctuary would be unrivaled. An old man spoke enviously as he watched a video stream of the fight. Teacher. Do you believe Huang Xiao can win? A middle-aged man asked the old man. It is difficult to determine. The old man sighed. The middle-aged man knew the old man very well, but he knew through his response that he actually did not believe in Huang Xiao's ability to triumph over the Shura. The middle-aged man proceeded to say, if there is not much difference between their fitness levels, he could still have a chance. Do not forget, the talents of a Shura rest solely in combat, the old man slowly said. Chapter 823, Shura Change Fists collided against each other in a hailstorm of strikes. Huang Zhao's fist gleamed like a golden hammer. The Shura battled without the flair, elemental, or even magical properties of skills humans employed through their use of hypergeno arts. The Shura only practiced raw power, and Yu Qilan used the strength derived from his flesh, muscle, and bone to oppose Huang Zhao's golden lights. For him to break each strike as he was doing, it was a testament to how frighteningly powerful he truly was. It is lucky for us that Huang Xiao was the one chosen to compete with him. If that was me up there, the bones in my hands would have been worn down into dust by now. Tang Zhenmiu said. Don't say that. When you become a surpasser, you won't be any worse than Yu Qilan, Lin Feng calmly responded. Can Huang Xiao win this fight? Ji Yanren asked with much worry. Ordinarily, Golden Buddha's defense and durability boons provide its users near unparalleled protection. If this continues, he may very well win. But Tang Zhenliu was about to say something, 
but then stopped mid-sentence. His brow furrowed. But what? Hansen asked. We cannot take stock in any proposed certainties. He is against Ashura, after all. Tang Xinliu shook his head, as if he regretted having to admit this. Lin Feng then said, I am afraid Huang Xiao may be at a disadvantage. Hansen and Ji Yin and looked shocked upon hearing this, and so Hansen asked, Why? Aren't they fairly balanced? Lin Feng was just about to explain, but as he opened his mouth, a sudden explosion came from the battlefield. The fighters had delivered two extremely powerful punches that, upon collision, sent them both reeling backwards. Yu Qilan looked at Huang Xiao and said, Your fitness is impressive, perhaps the best young humans can provide. But I must regretfully confess to you that you are inferior to us. Huang Xiao coldly replied, I don't think so. Really? Then I'll show you what the Shura are capable of. Yu Qilan's eyes flashed with a purple light. His body suddenly expanded and his muscles doubled in size. The fine and reserved body that once fought against Huang Xiao had been replaced with a hulking beast. The potential power looked frighteningly high, as if he could walk about sundering any stone he pleased. Sure a change. Huang Zhao's face went dim. Sure a change. Everyone else's faces changed at the same time, as well, as they exclaimed the same two words in unison. The visiting Shura looked cocky, satisfied with the reaction they had incited from the human crowd. They were proud of what Yu Chilan had accomplished. What is Shura change? Hansen frowned, having never heard of this before. But seeing Yu Chilan transform, it sent his mind back to zero. There were certain similarities he could not shake. Tang Jinliu now looked worried, and he explained, Shura change is their form of hypergeno art. It is different than what humans do, however. They don't train and practice with the flow of energy. Again, they exercise the raw nature of their bodies. When they use Shura change, their powers greatly increase. I had believed him to have already used it. I didn't expect him to have been fighting naked previously. Now, I must regretfully confess, Huang Xiao is doomed. As they spoke, Yu Qilan stepped forward. He was much faster now, powered by his incredible muscles. He dashed towards Huang Xiao and threw his fist into his chest. Ping. Huang Xiao used his arm to block the hit, but his body was knocked back four meters as his feet left a deep cleft in the marble plaza they fought upon. Everyone's faces fell. The fist was incredibly powerful, and they no longer believed Huang Xiao had what it took to stay competitive. Do you believe he to be stronger than you now? Yu Chilan did not deliver a follow-up hit. He just spoke in a disdainful manner. Huang Zhao's face contorted for a second, before regaining composure. Coldly he said, Strength is not everything, and I am not yet beaten. As he talked, the gold light that illuminated Huang Zhao's body faded away and his muscles relaxed. He looked directly into the eyes of his foe. Yu Chilan smiled and shot another fist in Huang Zhao's direction. This time, he did not want to collide with the punch. Huang Xiao dodged out of its way and quickly tried to deliver a punch of his own into Yu Chilan's belly. Yu Chilan threw another fist in an attempt to hurt his human nemesis, but Huang Xiao dodged once more. Like a willow tree in a hurricane, he weaved around to attack from a different angle. Huang Xiao is good. It is no wonder why he was selected to be our champion. As tough as he can be, he can be just as soft. He is smart, as well. Tang Xinliu had nothing but praise to offer Huang Xiao. Hansen believed Huang Xiao to be a good fighter, too. A special balance had been wrought inside him, one between his mind and his power. He could time things very well. His judgment and timing could not be any better. Riding on the whims of changing circumstance, he knew when to strike, how to dodge, and which way to move. Although he was losing, his mind still showed confidence and his resolve was not tarnished by thoughts of defeat. Huang Xiao is a good kid. The old man watched Huang Xiao through the video screen. Teacher, that Yu Chilan used Shura change to become stronger than Huan Xiao. That is in terms of brute force. With Huang Zhao's intelligence, he can still win. Can he? The middle-aged man asked with a hopeful tone. The old man shook his head and said, Huang Xiao is smart, yes. But it seems we have underestimated the power of this royal Shura. I still don't think he has a chance of being victorious. That being said, the Alliance has many smart young men. We will be stronger than them, in time. After the years that have elapsed, what is a few additional ones in comparison? Teacher, he really doesn't stand a chance, the middle-aged man asked. He thought Huang Xiao should have at least a 30% chance of winning. This match has already been settled, the old man coldly said. 
Wang Xiao, you're doing great. In the plaza, Tang Jinliu made sure to make his support heard. But Lin Feng said, Wang Xiao is losing though. How? Tang Jinliu asked with much surprise, not able to believe the words spoken to him. Hansen frowned, as he could tell Huang Xiao is in trouble, as well. At the same time, Yu Chelan took a step back. Then, he spoke to Huang Xiao once more. Are you going to keep on dodging like this? This is a strategy. It is one that takes skill, Huang Xiao calmly responded. Yu Chilan coldly said, Well, I just want you to know that these cheapo skills are useless before my power. You are a loser, bringing comfort to yourself and nothing more. After he spoke, Yu Chilan's eyes shone purple again, and blood vessels across his body began to pulsate and stick out. The purple veins decorated each muscle, and it was a scary sight to behold. He didn't look handsome anymore. He looked like a real Shura. Chapter 824 Should be killed. Boom. Yu Chilan's body shattered the atmosphere. It was as if he teleported directly in front of Huang Xiao, with his big hand reaching out for the young man's head. Unfortunately, it was too late for Wang Xiao to dodge. It was difficult to comprehend what Yu Chilan had just done all of a sudden. Whatever it was, his speed had increased exponentially. There was nothing Huang Xiao could do. He gritted his teeth as a golden light enveloped his body. His fist gleamed like molten gold as he cast it forward. He was not aiming to deflect Yu Chilan's fist, however, he was aiming for his chest. With his life on the line, he was ready to risk it all for the sake of landing one devastating blow. This Huang Xiao is good. Han Sen and the rest of the crowd were very supportive of his efforts. Huang Zhao's speed and power were lacking against Yu Chelan, but he was adaptive. If he maintained his defensive posture, he'd be delaying an inevitable loss and would never find a chance to strike back. Huang Xiao knew this all too well, and that was why he decided not to deflect whatever Yu Chelan was about to do. He knew his strength and speed weren't a match for his opponent, so he was willing to risk it all for any attack he could make. He was not being reckless, though. Huang Xiao was very good when it came to timing, and he had complete control of his body. His strike would surely land no matter what. Even though Yu Chilon was stronger, Huang Xiao could inflict damage of his own. And at the very least, Huang Xiao had Golden Buddha on his side. Although there was a chance of getting severely injured or even dying, Huang Xiao made this decision of his own volition. This was something Hansen greatly admired, and he was taken aback by how fearless and devoted to the fight Huang Xiao was. Everyone watched the two fists with their eyes open wide. That single moment seemed to take a lifetime for the people who watched it unfold, hovering at the edge of their seats. This was especially true for the four people who most worried over Huang Xiao's well-being. Their hearts were already pounding heavily, as if for a release from their chests. The demigod human and royal Shura would step in if their people were in danger. But right now, no one knew who was going to emerge victorious. Although the combatants were reaching a critical stage in their fight, all they could do was watch. And furthermore, whichever aid stepped in to help would lead to their fighter's forfeiture. Huang Xiao was already knee-deep in this situation, and stopping him now would be a worse fate than if he were to die. Pang. The moment Huang Zhao's fist struck Yu Chilan's chest, Yu Chilan's fist hit Huang Zhao's head. Arg! Huang Xiao shouted. He fell to the ground with his face drenched in blood, looking grievously wounded. Yu Chilan was hit, but he was still standing tall. He looked at his opponent on the ground with disdain. The demigod stepped forward and called for the immediate aid of a doctor. Everyone's eyes were glued to the stage, and their minds held out hope that Huang Xiao would be okay. Winning was important, but it wasn't worth a young man's life. They all wished him to be fine. Oh, sorry. I believe I may have hit you a little too hard there. Yu Chilon's words may have sounded apologetic on paper, but his arrogant face betrayed their meaning. You have great skill. We lost, the demigod said, as he coldly looked upon the Shura. Lin Feng, who was standing next to Hansen, looked murderous and said, that Yu Chilon must die for this. If I ever meet him again, I will kill him. Why is that? Hansen looked at Lin Feng. He knew him quite well and thought what he had said was rather out of character. What had happened had occurred in an established match, after all. This asshole should totally die. Tang Liu was fuming with rage, as well, and the twisted flame of a desire for slaughter was alight in his eyes. Why? Hansen frowned. Let's check on Huang Xiao first, we'll tell you on the way. Lin Feng spoke as they went towards the medical room Huang Xiao was taken to. Tang Liu was furious, angrily grumbling as he walked, 
That asshole is cheating. What do you mean? Hansen frowned. He had no idea what he meant. He watched the match just as they did, and Yu Chilan did not break the rules. There were no weapons employed, either. If he was cheating, Hansen hadn't been able to catch him. Old Han, you have never been to war. You know little about the Shura. They have what is called blood injection. They can inject themselves with the blood of a higher class Shura to temporarily earn their strength. Me and Old Lin have seen this occur many times. Yu Chilan most certainly used blood injection, Tang Jin Liu explained. Lin Feng's face looked dire. He didn't often get mad, but there he was. He coldly muttered, it was okay of him to use blood injection, as that is how they fight. It isn't too dissimilar to our hypergeno arts. But he held back on it and did not use it during the beginning. He let Huang Xiao fill himself with false hope. And just as he was willing to give his life for the fight, that was when Yu Chilan unleashed his power. Yu Chilan attempted to murder him. He could have used it during the beginning and brought the fight to a swift end, or many times during the middle, but he committed to using it during a critical, devastating stage where the demigod had no opportunity to stop such damage from being inflicted. Damn it. When Hansen heard the explanation, his new understanding led to him being mad, as well. Hansen had noticed that Yu Chilan became strangely powerful during the final few moments. He thought Yu Chilan was just strengthening his own resolve and preparing to take the fight a little more seriously. He never expected this was the reality of what he had seen. When the four of them reached the medical bay, the doctors had Huang Xiao in surgery. Many of Huang Zhao's friends nervously awaited him outside. Lin Feng saw a doctor he knew and pulled him aside to ask, Dr. Chan, how's Huang? Xiao? Dr. Chan had a wry smile and said, if he was injured anywhere else, we could have done an organ transplant. But he received significant blunt force trauma to the head, resulting in severe damage to the brain. He is still in critical condition, but our neurosurgeons are doing all that they can to stabilize him. After a pause, Dr. Chan quietly informed Lin Feng the punch was far too hard. His skull was split, and it was unable to absorb the entire force delivered. This resulted in his brain sustaining severe damage. Even if he survives, the nerve damage, the extent of which we will have to determine later, will affect him for the rest of his life. How bad is it? Tang Liu asked. Paralysis is a very serious consequence of such injuries. If the hit was a touch milder, he might only suffer partial mobility disabilities or only be affected during certain times or under certain conditions. For example, every now and then he might lose control in his hands. But with the way things are looking right now, there is a high chance of the patient suffering intellectual disabilities, Dr. Chan said. When they heard this, each of their faces went dim. This was worse than death for Huang Xiao. Even if his injuries extended no further, he would have lost the ability to fight. It would be impossible for him to adventure through the sanctuaries again. Chapter 825 Beat Me and You Can Fight Dollar The four of them returned to the plaza in a glum mood. Although they did not really know Huang Xiao, they felt awful upon learning what had happened to him. Please, fulfill your obligation and bring me Dollar. He is your strongest young one, after all. Han Sen, upon his return, heard Yu Chielan speaking to the receptionist. F asterisk CK. If I was a surpasser, I'd kick his ass so hard. Tang Jinyo said, angrily. He wished he was a surpasser, for in his present state, he could hardly lay a finger on Yu Chielan. With sure a change in blood injection, Yu Chielan was already able to beat a surpasser that was a celestial being. The hidden power he possessed was something not even Huang Xiao had the ability to overcome. Lin Feng was calm and did not say anything more. The people who knew him well, however, could tell he was suppressing a great fire of anger inside. Hansen suddenly stood up and walked towards the stage. He was fuming mad, and although he did not know Huang Xiao, he despised Yu Chilan enough to know what he had to do. Furthermore, he had repeatedly asked for a fight against Dollar. Hansen laughed in his heart and thought to himself, You want to fight Dollar? Do you? As you wish. Prepare to get spent. Hansen, what are you doing? Seeing Hansen approach the stage, Ji Yin and became incredibly worried. Old Han, do not be reckless. We can kill him together once we become surpassers. Tang Jin Liu called out. It's only a royal Shura. There's no need for me to wait that long, Hansen said in response as his fingers glided across Ji Yin Ron's face. He then told her, Sit right there and wait for me to kill this asshole. After that, 
Hansen continued his approach to the stage. Tang Xinliu still wanted to prevent him from doing this, and Ji Yinran's worry was not alleviated. If he wants to go that much, he must be confident, Lin Feng calmly said, stopping the two from any further attempts to change Han Sen's mind. As Han Sen neared the stage, Yu Qianlan was still requesting that someone find Dollar so that they might fight. Yu Qianlan, right? Do you have to fight Dollar to feel good about yourself? Han Sen said, as he ascended the stage and looked directly at his soon-to-be enemy. Everyone's attention now turned to silently focus on Han Sen, unsure what he was planning to do. Aside from Dollar, what other challenger can I fight who is worth my time? Yu Chilon proudly stated. There were others aside from Huang Xiao that were willing to fight him, but Yu Chilon declined them all. Okay, then. You can fight him. But first, you must beat me, Hansen calmly said. You? And who are you exactly, chump? I tire of you humans attempting to stall my true desire. How long do you expect me to fight scrawny worthless beings before I can go up against Dollar? Yu Chilon looked at Hansen with disdain. I lost a dollar once. Dollar took me out in one and a half punches. If you beat me, I can call upon Dollar to come over here and whip you like a dog. How does that sound? Hansen looked at Yu Chilon. One and a half punches, huh? Is this guy for real? Yu Chilon ignored Hansen and spoke to the receptionist directly. Of course, he is my fiancé. He only ever speaks the truth. Ji Yinren stood up and said, President Ji's daughter? Fine. I'll believe you once more. Yu Chilon looked at Ji Yin and, and then returned his gaze to Han Senator. He continued by saying, If I win, and I am still unable to see Dollar, then tonight's fighting is over. I have no interest in fighting noobs any longer. Hansen then coldly said, Humanity is graced with a desire to uphold their word. Furthermore, we are polite. You allowed Huang Xiao to strike first in the last match, so allow me to return the gesture. Yu Chilon, I want you to make the first attack. Good. If you can withstand one and a half dollar punches, we can quickly determine whether or not you can withstand 1.0 of my punches. Yu Chilon did not waste any time and immediately swung his fist. As he swung, he used Shura Change and the wretched power boosting method of blood injection. He planned to one hit kill Han Sr. Hansen had started this match, so he couldn't allow himself to immediately get punched and defeated. If the demigod stepped in now, it would be humiliating not only for him, but for humanity as a whole. Such a tale would be laughed about by the Shura for many more generations. It would be a jest, the story of a proud human that sought to start a fight but was knocked out by a single punch in a single second. The demigod was ambivalent and wasn't too sure what to think. They couldn't rightly save him, but they did not want him to be killed. As such, they were unsure about what to do. Hansen is still an evolver. Is he going to be okay? A middle-aged man frowned while watching the video. Unless he is close to the rank of celestial being, even if he was from the Luo family and had learned the falsified Sky Sutra, I do not believe he can beat the Shura. And I say this in the knowledge that the falsified Sky Sutra is an evil and murderous talent. It is truly wicked, but without the necessary power, it won't yield the results he desires. He will die. The old man looked glum as he spoke. He hated Yu Chilon's behavior, and despite his dire prediction, he wanted Hansen to win. But the power gulf was very wide, and for Hansen to win, it would require nothing short of a miracle. That was why even this old man's predictions were miserable. On another planet, Luo Haidang watched the fight through a video stream while Luo Li made tea for him. Luo In had not found Hansen, but Luo Haidang believed Hansen carried the blood and genetic qualities of the Luo family. As such, he didn't think Hansen had what it took to deny the allure of learning the Falsified Sky Sutra. Show me how far your practice of the Falsified Sky Sutra has come along. Luo Haidang looked at Hansen through the video stream intently, earnestly hoping he would retaliate with the deadly skill. Ji Yinwu and Ji Ruajin were watching the scene, as well, and they looked nervous. Although they had faith in the Falsified Sky Sutra, they knew Yu Chilan had blood injection and they believed the Shura was devastatingly more powerful. The Ning family, the Qin family, the Wang family, the Dong Lin, and Zhao families were all watching the same match. They wanted to see what path Han San had decided to follow. They wondered if he'd be more like Luo Haidang, doing so in a bid to impress everyone. Ji Yin and her friends were extremely anxious. They knew Hansen was strong, but they were still worried. 
The power Uchilan possessed exceeded the possible power of an Evolver by a great extent. As everyone watched with bated breath, Hansen did not choose to dodge the punch. Instead, he swung a fist of his own. Hansen aimed for Uchilan's head, electing to risk his life to deliver damage just as Huang Xiao had. Chapter 826 Shura, huh? Is that it? Many people believed Hansen would risk his life. After all, the Falsified Sky Sutra could only attack and not defend. And the Falsified Sky Sutra delivered frighteningly powerful hits. The manner in which a practitioner could exploit and ravage weak spots was ruinous, but it also made it ineffective against behemoths. On the other hand, whether it was used to fight a human or Shura, the damage it would inflict would be enormous provided that the gulf in power wasn't too much. The Falsified Sky Sutra could indeed restrain the Shura, which was something many people acknowledged. But unbeknownst to the others, Hansen had not practiced the Falsified Sky Sutra, so when he swung his fist, many people were shocked at the result. Sonic Thunder Punch? Why not the powers of the Falsified Sky? The old man was shocked. Didn't he learn the Falsified Sky Sutra? The middle-aged man looked confused. Why Sonic Thunder Punch? Ji Yin was screened. It was difficult to believe Lady Lan's son did not learn the devastating skill that was the Falsified Sky Sutra and instead opted to use Sonic Thunder Punch. Luo Haiteng was the one who was shocked the most, however. Seeing Hansen not make use of the Falsified Sky Sutra, he suddenly stood up, stared at the video, and shouted aloud, Why didn't he use the Falsified Sky Sutra? Was Little Lan truly that cruel? Would she favor the death of her son over his learning of the Falsified Sky Sutra? Luo Haiteng believed that Luo Lan must have been the reason why Hansen had not learned the skill he wished him to, and that she had outright prevented him. Otherwise, he really would have learned it. And now, without the ability, there was no chance of him competing with Yu Chelan. Using this punch was practically suicide, or so he thought. It wasn't only Luo Haiteng who felt this way, either. Many people expected Hansen to use it, but were surprised when he did not. At that moment, all their faces turned grim. They believed Hansen had placed himself in a wretched position. No matter how powerful Sonic Thunder Punch was, it was only a hypergeno art. There was no way it could fathomably be what was needed to go against Yu Chelan. Luo Li was confused, as well. She did not understand why Luo Lan would not have allowed Hansen to practice the Falsified Sky Sutra. She thought the reason Hansen challenged Yu Chelan was because he had learned the skill and wished to display its power. Only God could have predicted his decision to waltz into such a fight and use Sonic Thunder Punch, of all things. No matter what people thought, however, Hansen still focused on his casting of Sonic Thunder Punch. Yu Chilan's eyes were full of disdain. The Shura had researched many of the skills and talents humans possessed, and he had seen Sonic Thunder Punch once used in the war. He believed the skill to be useless, and the thunder would have no chance of destroying his body. It wouldn't come close to numbing him, either. Uchilan had come here to impress all who watched the bouts. If he had not, then he wouldn't have tried to kill Huang Xiao. But now that Hansen was delivering himself to him, Uchilan had no hesitation in exhausting all his force and strength into this one devastating blow. A very strong and fast punch. The other royal Shura continued to watch the fight, also of the belief that Hansen's sonic thunder punch was far weaker than whatever Uchilan was about to deliver. It was far slower and Hansen's chest would be smashed open before the sonic thunder punch got close. Even if Hansen could punch Yu Chilan, the power delivered would not be enough to injure him. If Hansen received a hit, on the other hand, he'd be killed. The demigod still hesitated, unsure whether or not he should step in and save Hansen's life. It was a tough decision for him to make. The demigod ultimately decided to save Han Senator it was humiliating, yes but he did not want to stand by and watch another young man lose his life. But just as he was about to step forward, he noticed something strange and he pulled back. Just as they were about to punch each other, Yu Chilan froze. It was a sudden and short, momentary freeze. In the space of a second, Hansen's fist sped up and crashed against Yu Chilan's head. Hansen's eyes flashed blue as thunder flickered across his body. The fist was driven deep into Yu Chilan's forehead. Stop. Upon seeing this, the royal Shura's face completely changed. He wanted to stop Hansen from delivering his punch, but it was too late. Boom. Hansen's fist smashed into his opponent's skull. There wasn't much noise, but Yu Chilan's eye sockets began to cascade with blood. 
The eyes themselves looked ready to eject themselves from the sockets. As blood covered his features, a silver lightning burst forth from his face. Uchilon's brain was suddenly turned to mud by the horrible power of the sonic thunder mix. His entire body was electrocuted, and as he convulsed, his body continued standing there like a doll. Uchilon was strong, but he was not too far off a human. There were parts of his body that were weaker, and just like a human, one was his brain. The way Hansen used Sonic Thunder Punch and Ian Force was enough to destroy the skull-encased organ. It was payback. Yu Chilon ruined Huang Zhao's brain, and so Hansen was delivering Yu Chilon his just deserts. As effective as it was, it worked even better than Hansen himself had predicted it would. Yu Chilon's physical abilities were incredible, mostly derived from the blood injection. But while blood injection increased his strength and speed, it did nothing to protect his brain. The royal Shura shouted in his inability to stop Han Senator so, he swung his fist and attempted to attack Han Sen from behind. What was coming towards Han Sen now was as powerful a punch as any demigod could deliver. The fact that it was coming from behind as a sucker punch shocked all who watched. They did not expect a royal Shura to commit to such a cheap move, and it was also too late to tell Han Sen to watch out. The demigod was infuriated by this action and so he leapt into the fray to save Hansen from the Royal Shura, but it was too late to do so. Not a single person expected the Royal Shura to behave in such an obscene fashion. Hansen's back was facing the Royal Shura, but it looked as if his back grew a pair of eyes. He stepped forward and grabbed Uchelon, who was as responsive as a child's doll. He swung around the lifeless body and presented Uchelon as a me shield to block the Royal Shura's hit. Squash. The royal Shura almost punched Uchelon, struggling to force the wretched power he was about to deliver back inside him. But when that power was pushed back inside, it caused him to cough up blood. All the humans were shocked. They could not believe Hansen not only punched Uchelon and put him in such a state, but was smart enough to evade and force a royal Shura to withdraw his attack. It was like a miracle. Shura, huh? Is that it? Hansen threw Uchelon, who was still in a vegetative state away like a piece of trash. He let him twitch and convulse on the ground as he spoke to the royal Shura with disdain. Chapter 827 I'm not going to stop. So what? I'm going to kill you. The royal Shura was embarrassed, and his rage was inflamed. He looked as if he was preparing to attack Hansen again. Please, try to preserve whatever remains of your dignity. The demigod now stood in front of Hansen with the presence of a mountain. With a look as cold as ice, he spoke to the royal Shura. How dare you kill our royal representative? We Shura will not allow such a slight to slide. This was the human alliance, a stronghold where countless humans lived. The royal Shura's anger had overwhelmed him, and in a place such as this, where he was unable to let loose his violence, all he could do was shout in spite. Please, do not forget it was you who requested peace with us. We did not present you with the idea for a truce. If you choose not to abide to the terms of the treaty we established in our discussions, it is no skin off our nose, the demigod spoke aloud, his response fierce. All the other Shura looked on, unable to say a word. Hansen, follow me in our return. Let us continue the feast. The demigod held on to Hansen's hand and led him towards the lobby, uncaring for how all the Shura were looking. Yep, let's celebrate. No one can leave without getting drunk. Tang Liu shouted out, as he tugged Lin Feng to follow in the same direction. All the young humans left towards the lobby with great joy, while the Shura grumbled angrily amongst themselves. Not bad. This kid is even more amazing than Luo Haidang. He didn't learn the falsified Sky Sutra, and actually used Sonic Thunder Punch to kill Uchelon. Haha, this truly is impressive. It is amazing. I would love to see the look on Luo Haitong's face right now. A member of the Luo family has turned away from learning their falsified Sky Sutra. Ha 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 ha. The old man was laughing so hard, tears began to roll. The middle-aged man, by comparison, was frozen. He had followed this man for 40 years and had never once seen him laugh in such a manner. This kid is really good, little Zhang. I would like to meet him. Can you sort that out for me? The old man had managed to stop laughing, but he was still grinning from ear to ear. Yes, of course, teacher. When Joan was shocked, as the old man had never requested an audience with someone before. Even if a noble from the Alliance came to visit him, he didn't spare the time of day to see them. Now, not only did he want to meet Hansen, 
he was willing to go out and pay him a visit himself. Luo Haiang wore a complicated grimace as he sat there in silence. He gazed into the paused video with eyes that did not blink. Luo Li stood in the corner of the room, not willing to speak a single word. She even breathed as gently as she could, not wishing to disturb or rouse the ire of Luo Haiang. She had not seen him in such a state for many years. The last time he appeared like this, he went to his spirit shelter and battled for four days straight in a bid to conquer it. Why did he not learn the falsified Sky Sutra? After the long silence, Luo Haiang broke it with this simple sentence, in a voice that trembled with depression. Old Han, good job. I have never given you the admiration you deserve before, but this time I do. This time I really, really do. Here, I am going to drink in your honor. Cheers. Tang Liu, devoid of all manners, picked up two cups and filled them both up with wine. He presented one cup to Han Sen and lifted one cup to his own lips. Quickly, he gulped it down and shouted, Awesome. Never since leaving the battlegrounds have I felt so awesome. Awesome. Yep, awesome. If this was an average feast, Tang Jin Liu would have been thrown out on his backside by now already. But today, the higher-ups did not care and allowed him to be as big a clown as he desired. All the young people were tremendously excited, surrounding Han Sen in celebration of his deed. They weren't going to let him leave without getting him drunk. Ji Yin Ran, seeing him surrounded by people who were praising his actions, felt overjoyed and proud for him. Of course, most of her joy came from seeing him emerge from the scrap with Yu Chilan and Skaith. The fact that she had an excellent, truly powerful boyfriend came second to his safety. Still, who didn't want a hero boyfriend? Although such things were not incredibly important to Ji Yin Ran, she was starting to feel as if her dreams were coming true. Hansen was not very good at drinking. It wasn't long before he could not consume any more, and the alcohol had made his head heavy and his stomach upset. It wasn't easy to escape the hounding crowd. He attempted to find somewhere to hide, and just as he found a place, Lin Feng appeared before him out of nowhere, presenting him with another full glass. He said, Cheers, brother. Hansen stood in front of Lin Feng, frozen for three whole seconds. Then, he said, Blarg, and puked all over him. Tang Jin Liu, who was catching up from behind, froze as well. All for different reasons, of course. He had never seen Lin Feng in such a mess before, and even across bloody battlefields he had never appeared so disheveled and dirty. Lin Feng was a tidy person, who desired everything to be perfect. When his girlfriend visited his house, she had to remove her shoes, take off her coat, and not lay a finger on any of his belongings. He once had another girlfriend, but he broke up with her after she sat on his clothes by accident. He could never look at her straight after that. Now that Lin Feng had puke all over him, fresh from Han Sin's gut, Tang Jinli couldn't fathom how he might react. Will old Lin start a fight with old Han? And if so, who should I support? Bah, who cares? It would only be a fight between two elites. I can't care too much about something like that. Tang Jinliu's mind raced over the different scenarios that might soon unfold, and then suddenly started to think, fight him. Come on, fight him. Seeing Lin Feng move, reaching his hand out towards Han Sen, the excitement inside Tang Jinliu reached greater and greater heights each passing second. Now, his mind said, that's it. They're going to fight. A fight is about to start. They're going to fight. But again, Tang Jinliu was delivered a shock that froze him absolutely still. He was so surprised that his eyes almost popped out. Lin Feng, after reaching out his hands, did not hit Han Senator. All he did was take off his puke-covered coat and put it aside. Then he hugged Han Sen, who looked ready to pass out and hit the deck. After that, he dragged him towards a room and shut the door. Holy smokes! Are my eyes screwed in right? That couldn't have been Lin Feng. The last time I got drunk in his house, that asshole threw me out the door and made me sleep out in the rain. Hansen didn't just get drunk, he threw up all over him. And now he is being hugged and taken to a private room? This cannot be. Tang Jin Liu rubbed his eyes repeatedly, but regardless of who else he thought it might be, deep down he knew that it was undoubtedly Lin Feng. There was no public stream, so ordinary folks of the Alliance were unable to watch the fight. But still, news of the fight leaked to the press and caused a grand, delightful shock for the populace. Hearing Hansen killed the Royal Shura Yu Chelan in a single punch and made a Royal Shura elite cough up blood put Hansen's name on the tip of everyone's tongue. 
It was the first time his name had true relevance in the Alliance. Chapter 828 Announcing a Secret Every media outlet reported on the event, how a man in his twenties effortlessly beat a royal shura. To humanity, this was a tremendously exciting affair. Hansen, furthermore, was the future son-in-law of the president. Due to his prestige, all the citizens of the Alliance developed a keen interest in him. They wanted to learn every detail they could about him, large and small. Many people even questioned the manners and etiquette he employed when visiting the bathroom. Hansen had been born into an ordinary family, but his father died while he was still young. Therefore, he was raised primarily by his mother. He initially went to a public school, but after much struggle, managed to enter a high-class military school. That was where he met the president's daughter, from which they ignited a spark and kindled a romance. From a middling, lowly heritage to one of great renown, his life was the perfect example of a classic success story. Onwards and upwards, his life and prestige did not seem to slow down. Lin Feng went to visit Huangshan numerous times, and when he came this time, he brought with him a demigod healer to aid in his restoration. Over a short amount of time, his wounds sealed and the previous damages weren't very visible. The Alliance did everything they could to reduce the damages he suffered, but not all their efforts were successful. His brain had received a cruel amount of damage, and many parts of it had been utterly destroyed, beyond healing or repair. Neither technology nor skills could help. Because of this, Huang Zhao's body suffered a number of problems. However, the efforts of the Alliance that were focused on minimizing his lasting disabilities were mostly a success. The biggest problem that remained was his movement. While most of his body functioned correctly, there were occasional issues with his movement that could not be solved or overcome. For example, when he wanted to reach into his pockets, he had trouble guiding his hands into the entrance of his pockets accurately. To a fighter of such caliber, this was disastrous. Do not worry for my future well-being. While my body may remain permanently damaged, my mind and my consciousness are the same as they always have been. Even if I can't fight anymore, I can put this battered brain to use elsewhere. Huang Xiao was more optimistic than was expected. He hadn't been emotionally crushed by what had transpired, and when he spoke, a fire was still alight in his eyes. They told everyone that what he was saying was most earnest and true. After the fight, Hansen had indeed become rather famous. His feet made others acknowledge his true fitness level, and people now knew it had to be at least over 200. But people also knew that it was impossible for revolvers to go that high, unless he had somehow managed to absorb life geno essences and had earned himself super geno points. People frequently discussed all sorts of topics relating to Han senator officers, on the other hand, were only thinking and whispering of a way in which they might get him to reveal his secret to absorbing life geno essences. Han Sen's communicator hadn't stopped ringing since the night of the fight, so he turned it off. But when he refused to allow his communicator to keep ringing, the same could not be said for others of the Ji family. The rest of the family was pestered by people who wanted Han Sen's knowledge. The reason Ji Ruajin became president was not his own power. He had ties and alliances to many factions, families, and organizations in high places. As a result, he could not deny their requests. Ji Ruajin went to talk with Han Sen and asked him about it. Regardless of whether or not he had absorbed life geno essences, he had to appease the alliance with an answer. He couldn't ignore their inquisitiveness forever. Hansen did not hesitate or lie in his response. Quickly and affirmatively, he said, I have obtained super geno points, yes. When Hansen went to fight Yu Chilon, he deliberated the consequences of revealing so much. Ji Ruajin's question did not come as a surprise, and so Hansen's response was prepared. Ji Ruajin fell silent upon hearing Hansen's confirmation. After a certain amount of time elapsed, he said to Hansen, Tell me what you can. Hansen smiled and said, There is no secret. It is easy to obtain super geno points. You simply need to find the eggs of a super creature, one that is semi composed inside its shell. Eat it, and you will receive super geno points. That is where I get mine from. Really? Ji Ruajin asked, shocked. He did not expect the answer to be so simple. On my own life, I pledge to you that this is not incorrect, Hansen said. Good. This is an important discovery, and one that means a lot to the future progression of humanity. Ji Ruajin did not stop there, and he continued by saying, Do not worry any further. The Ji family will handle all the matters pertaining to this revelation. 
and the benefits you will receive for this discovery will not disappoint you. Hansen hadn't planned on receiving any rewards, particularly so since he didn't admit the entire truth. And what's more, obtaining the eggs of a super creature was a good deal harder than killing a super creature outright. Super creatures were not difficult to locate in the second god sanctuary, but eggs most certainly were. If people wanted to spend their time searching for them, Hansen didn't believe their efforts would get in his way too much. The chances were extremely low that someone would be lucky enough to find such an egg, and further yet manage to kill the super creature that was guarding it. And maxing out super geno points by going for eggs alone seemed impossible. Back in the sanctuary, Hansen made plans to leave Moment Shelter. He wanted to look for another human shelter so he could finish his deal with Tangjinlio by selling him the life geno essence. After leaving the mountain ranges, it wasn't too long before he found a human shelter where he could finish the transaction. The Tang family gifted him ownership of a whole rare metal mine. It was not Z-Steel, but the Z-Alloy you could get from the mine was quite important to have. It was expensive, and people were still figuring out the qualities and properties of the alloy. As such, the price was still on the rise. Inside the Angel Gene office, Zhao Seven spoke to someone. In the image on screen stood the royal Shura that had tried to attack Han Sen after the bout. Mr. Zhao, to complete our contract we had to sacrifice one of our royal members. Shouldn't you do something about this? The royal Shura said to Zhao Seventh. Zhao Seventh coldly responded, Preventing the establishment of peace is our ultimate goal, and that is not just because of me. Furthermore, Yu Qianlan's death was a result of his own recklessness. That is no responsibility of mine. Mr. Zhao. Our friend cannot have been slain in vain. Think on it some more, because if you don't make the right decision, we may have to end our cooperative venture, the royal Shura said firmly. Zhao Seventh frowned, and a look of anger and scorn consumed his face. It was only for a moment, and then it left as quickly as it came. He smiled and said, General Shahang, what is it that you want? I don't care how it is achieved, but the person that slew one of ours has to pay. Hansen must die. Shahang's face grimaced with the ugly look of murder. No problem. That can be arranged without difficulty. Give me a month, and by the end of that time frame, Hansen will be gone from the face of this world. As for the latest package, please have it delivered on time, Zhao Seventh said. I will await your good news. Until then, consider our deal of cooperation terminated, Shahang said. Fine. Zhao Seventh smiled. After their communication, Zhao Seventh smiled. He called up Zhao Lian and Koli told him, take our people to planet Dong Long, rob their supplies, and kill the Shura there. Zhao Lian was shocked at the sudden order and asked, Chairman, doesn't that mean we will end up as their enemies? What will happen to our supplies in the future? They are not the only royal Shura there. If our arrangement with them comes to an end, I am sure another family will be eager to take their place. Zhao Seventh coldly smiled. Chapter 829 Little Silver's Hunt for Treasure Hansen ventured back into the mountains in the hopes of tracking more super creatures. Although there were many super creatures, he couldn't just go for any. Furthermore, he had to find second generation ones, which greatly narrowed those he could deem to be appropriate targets. When will I be able to take down the Devil Blood King's shelter? There must be many second generation super creatures in a place such as that. Hansen thought about the prospect with greed, but they were thoughts and nothing more. With his power at its current level, he knew that he would be unable to deal with so many super creatures all at once. Thoughts and fantasies of such a daring venture were all he could conjure about it. Exiting a particular valley, Hansen noticed he was leaving the mountain ranges behind him. Having searched all that time, he felt disheartened at his inability to locate a second generation super creature. Just under 40 super geno points to go until I can max it out. Hansen was hoping to become a surpasser sometime soon, as he was too weak right now and could not compete with the elites of the Alliance. He used all the strength he possessed to take down Yu Qianlan, and he had to make use of the power of the Devil Eye Spider. With it, he tricked the Shura's mind for a single moment, enough for Han Sen to deliver the blow that destroyed the royal's brain. If he hadn't done that, then a victory was most certainly not an assured thing. If he became a surpasser, however, such a fight would have been easy. Killing anyone of similar strength would be a trivial accomplishment with the power he'd possess. Leaving the craggy slopes of the mountains behind him, he found himself in the midst of verdant expanses and emerald pastures. The fields were still on a bit of a slant, but they were decorated with an abundance of plants. 
On the grassy fields, Hansen saw a single creature chasing away a whole group of lesser creatures. They were like sheep being herded, and there were many of them. The creature that chased them had six legs and two arms. It was a curious-looking thing, and it was difficult for him to discern what it was or think of another creature that it resembled. Seeing its life force, he realized that it was a sacred blood creature. Hansen wasn't interested in killing sacred blood creatures, so he planned to fly past the ongoing kerfuffle and save himself the time and energy it would take to dispatch them. But as Hansen flew over, the silver fox leapt off his shoulder. After it landed, it took off running towards the strange monster. Little Silver hopped onto the monster and quickly electrocuted it, and seeing it do so made Hansen quite confused. Little Silver never aggressively attacked a creature of its own volition, so he was uncertain why it was doing so now. The sheep-like creatures were weird, too. Their life forces were mostly ordinary, and the strongest amongst them were mutant. Queerly, none of the creatures seemed to flee the Silver Fox's presence. After the Silver Fox slew the monster, it did not proceed to slay the sheep. Instead, all it did was gaze at them from afar. Hansen could only guess why. With a puzzled expression, Hansen went over to the silver fox and squatted by its side to watch the sheep just as his little pet did. Then Hansen saw something weird. Ordinary creatures rarely ate plants, or food in general. Only the children of creatures traditionally ate plants, and they were usually super creatures. But the herd of sheep that Hansen watched graze was entirely composed of ordinary and mutant creatures. It was a curious sight, watching them lower their heads to the ground and consume grass. But aside from that one strange aspect, nothing else stood out to Hans Senator for all intents and purposes, they appeared to be sheep and nothing else. Little Silver, it is time for us to go. When Hansen told the Silver Fox it was time to leave, it didn't budge. All it did was continue to lie on the grass and watch the sheep. There was nothing Hansen could do about its stubborn refusal to leave. So all he did was return to the silver fox and continue watching the sheep alongside it. Although it appeared to be nothing, he started to suspect the silver fox had made a discovery of some sort, and Hansen simply hadn't yet seen it. They spent half the day watching the little creatures, and the entire time they watched, the sheep remained in the area, merrily grazing the hours away. When the sun looked about to set, the sheep began to relocate. One sheep took the lead and it led them directly up the mountains Hansen had just come down from. The silver fox followed them, and Hansen followed the silver fox. Not long after, the sheep entered a valley that was sealed on one end. But this seemed to be where the sheep lived. The silver fox sniffed the ground all around like a little pig, which amused Hans Sr. But Hansen understood this behavior was abnormal for the silver fox. It only behaved like this if it had found something. Therefore, he gave it the time it needed. Is there treasure to be found here, in the mountains? Hansen bore a look of deep contemplation, but then, he saw the silver fox hasten its pace and proceed further into the valley. Hansen snapped out of his thoughts and quickly ran to catch up. The silver fox sniffed the ground all along the way, as if it were in search of something. The sheep didn't seem aggressive, and when the duo approached them, all the sheep did was run away, but they watched the two that had come to their valley. It is fortunate that they live here and there are no humans around. They'd all have been slain. If humans were out and about these regions, Hansen thought to himself. Little Silver continued on its way into the deeper recesses of the valley. It seemed to have been led to the face of a cliff, and it began scraping the stone with its claws. There was a very thin crack where the silver fox was digging. Nothing, save something with the width of paper, would be permitted entry into that crack. What are we doing here? Hansen approached the wall and took a look at what the silver fox was trying to dig through. From the small crevice, a sort of liquid leaked. It looked like it was providing moisture to the plants in the area, allowing them to grow more quickly. The hasty silver fox had managed to dig a two-meter hole into the ground. At its bottom, it opened up into a cave. It was massive, and the cavern was furnished with a grand number of stalactites. It was rather humid inside. And in there, you could also hear the constant sound of water dripping. Hansen saw much water drop from the tips of the stalactites, adding to a pool that had formed below them. The water that babbled out of the mountain must have come from this pool, but it didn't look like anything special. The silver fox approached the pool and circled it numerous times, as if he was looking for something specific. Hansen followed the silver fox, but before he joined it at the side of the pool, the silver fox turned around, showed its teeth to its master, and growled. Don't be so selfish. 
Even if you have located something decent, I won't steal it from you. Hansen might have said that, but it was just a lie. In his heart, he contemplated the manner in which he might steal whatever goody the silver fox was searching for. But still, with the silver fox behaving that way, Hansen stayed his approach. He stood a small distance away and observed the silver fox, hoping to catch a glimpse of what it was searching for. Not long after, Hansen noticed the reason the silver fox had shooed him away. It wasn't because of greed. It was because there was something in the pool that was living. Little Silver was warning him. Hansen didn't realize this at first, but when the silver fox stopped to observe the pool, he noticed something was amiss. Chapter 830 Transparent Little Fish In the pool, in the direction the silver fox was looking, swam a fish. The fish wasn't very large. In fact, it was only about 10 centimeters long, and it was semi-transparent. The bones were transparent, as well, and the only way you could properly catch sight of it was by spotting its blood vessels. If you didn't peer at the water carefully and look for it that way, you wouldn't notice it existed at all. Because of the water, Hansen was unable to sense its life force. Instead, he summoned his devil eye mask and managed to espy the presence of a flame on the fish. It was its life force, and it burned as hot as any other super creatures did. That little thing is a super creature. Hansen felt a mixture of shock and confusion. The energy inside the little fish was blurry, so it was only a first-generation super creature. And since the fish did not appear to possess the elemental properties of thunder, Hansen wondered why the silver fox seemed to show so much interest. The silver fox lay down near the pool and did not move. After a while, it began circling the pool as it had when it first arrived. The little blighter almost seemed to be lost in thought. What does he want? Hansen said to himself, as he observed the silver fox. If the silver fox wanted to kill the fish, then it could have very well done so. The pool wasn't very deep, only about three feet deep at the very most. He could even effortlessly electrify the water with lightning, without a single worry about aquatic retaliation. Plus, Hansen was there. If the silver fox wanted to attack and felt that it needed backup, Surely it knew its master wouldn't sit idly by watching it tussle with the fishy wretch all by itself. But all the silver fox did was lie down near the pool again. It watched the little transparent fish swimming around and did nothing at all. Hansen was very curious what was going on, but there was nothing he could do. He could only wait. If he got close to the pool, the silver fox would approach Hansen and make a fearsome face. Understanding how powerful his pet had gotten, Hansen wasn't willing to take any chances with somehow invoking the ire of the silver fox. Not long after, a sheep entered the cave the silver fox had dug. It didn't seem to be afraid of people, and it strutted right over beside Hans Sr. When the sheep saw the pool, it bought. It walked towards the pool as if it were thirsty and fancied a drink. Hansen thought the silver fox was going to stop it, but it didn't. It continued to lie where it was, watching the sheep quench its thirst at the pool. Hansen thought the fish might have been angry at this intrusion, but it didn't have any negative reaction. In fact, it didn't look as if the fish cared at all. It continued to swim as mellowly as it had the entire time. The sheep drank quite a bit, and once it was done, it turned around and prepared to leave. But what Hansen saw next was a most terrifying scene. The sheep's mouth began to rot, and bits of sizzling flesh fell to the ground below. To make it all the more unnerving, the sheep acted as if it had not noticed a thing. It wasn't in pain or anything, and it merely continued to trot back towards the outside as casually as it had entered. While it walked, more of its flesh fizzled away from its face, coating the cavern floor in blood. It began to happen elsewhere on its body, as goopy chunks of its flesh slid free from the bones of the sheep they once composed. It wasn't long until parts of its skeleton were exposed. The sheep continued walking to the exit, and by the time it left the cave, it was nothing but a skeleton. In a grisly, horrific mess, its organs lay scattered and strewn all about. Seeing the sheep walk outside alive, with only its bones to indicate what it was, Hansen could hardly believe his eyes. Hansen was given a cold sweat, seeing this. And now, he quickly understood why the silver fox did not want him to approach. The liquid in that pool was by no means a consumable refreshment. For the fish itself to survive inside there, it had to be a miracle. Then, from outside the cave, a chorus of buying could be heard. Hansen quickly ran out and saw that all the other sheep were frightened and trying to avoid the sheep that was now just a skeleton. But it really did seem as if the skelly sheep hadn't noticed anything amiss.
and it continued to believe it was the same as the rest of its fluffy companions. It tried following the other sheep around, unaware of why it was being avoided. As the skelly sheep followed them around, however, it wasn't long before Hansen heard something snap. Several of its bones broke, and it collapsed on the ground. What the H asterisk LL is the water in that pool? Hansen thought to himself, in utter disbelief at the ghastly sight he had just witnessed. When he returned to look at the creepy pool, his heart pounded with fear. Hansen sniffed the air and did not notice anything that smelled amiss, so at the very least it wasn't a natural acid. It seemed as if the water came from the stalactites above. A pool had formed from the constant dripping. Hansen looked up and noticed a number of cracks inside the stalactites, indicating the water must have leaked out from inside them. But the amount of water coming from them was very little. There were ten stalactites, and there was only one drop every few minutes. God only knew how many years it would have taken for the pool to be created. Little Silver, if you keep waiting here, it'll all be for nothing. If you want this fish out of the pool, don't expect it to do so by itself. Perhaps we should bang our heads together and think of a way in which we can get it out ourselves, eh? Hansen spoke to Little Silver as he continued to lie prone, watching the fish. The Silver Fox then turned around and looked at Hansen, as if he was expecting Hansen to suggest a plan. Use your thunder. Electrify the water, spook it out, and then grab it. Hansen suggested after a short period of thought. The silver fox looked at Hansen with disdain. It cast lightning out onto the surface of the water, but it didn't seem to do anything. It appeared as if it dissolved when it came into contact with the curious liquid of the pool. Now Hansen understood the look he had been given, realizing the lightning could not penetrate the surface of the water. What is this water, then? What makes it behave like that? Hansen was shocked. Well, that's okay. If the thunder is absorbed by the water, I'd like to see it absorb this. As Hansen's dialogue came to a close, he quickly summoned his peacock crossbow, loaded it with raw Z steel bolts, and took aim at the fish in the pool. The silver fox's eyes opened wide and it retreated a few steps, expecting Hansen to kill the fish. Approaching the pool a little closer, Hansen corrected his aim to obtain perfect accuracy on the fish. He predicted its movement and then pulled the trigger. But when the bolt pierced the water, he somehow missed. The surface of the pool was mirror-like, giving a reflection far clearer than average water would. Therefore, the fish's position in the water was different than it appeared. The bolt missed and lodged itself inside the rocky bottom of the pool. This made Hansen feel pretty bad. The water was terrifying, and Hansen didn't think he could retrieve the Z-Steel raw bolt with any modicum of ease. But he didn't dwell on it too much, but instead retrieved another Z-Steel bolt and took aim at the fish once more. Hansen calculated its path and took into account the refraction of the water. Pat. The bolt pierced the water and the fish's body. Its body did not resist the flight of the bolt in the slightest, and all it did was twitch a little before flipping over dead. It died, as simple as that. Hansen froze. He did not expect the creepy fish to die so easily. There was no struggle, and it was killed with a single shot.